Vanakkam. We are all gathered here today to celebrate the life of a multifaceted personality, someone who we fondly call Auntie. Mrs. Meena Swaminathan left her mark on multiple spheres, ranging from gender to early childhood to theater. And it's not just about leaving her personal mark, she's also left a legacy. Today, there's a very thoughtfully put together program that will celebrate what she enjoyed, what she gave her life to, and what she's left behind. We'll start with a short series of compositions that will be performed by Mr. Vedant Bharadwaj. The connection here is that he's an uh, alumnus of Rishi Valley, and uh, Mrs. Meena Swaminathan's mentor has also deeply influenced his life. The songs that he will perform today are some of her favorites and we hope she's listening. Mm -hmm. The mic can be reduced a little bit, volume. Uh... This first song, uh, Sant Brahmanand, he says that those who remember the name of the Lord at every step and let go of their attachments to what we consider worldly and which entrap us in the Maya of this world that we have created will move on to the highest step and become one with the Lord. Jo bhaje hari ko sada जो भजे हरि को सदा स 
सो ही परम पद पाएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा जो भजे हरि को सदा सो ही परम पद पाएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा देह के माला देह के माला तिलक और छाप नहीं किस काम के देह के माला तिलक और छाप नहीं किस काम के प्रेम भक्ति के प्रेम भक्ति के बिना नहीं नाथ के मन भाएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा जो भजे हरि को सदा सो ही परम पद पाएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा छोड़ दुनिया के मजे सब छोड़ दुनिया के मजे बैठ कर एकांत में बैठ कर एकांत में एकांत में ध्यान धर हरि का चरण का ध्यान धर हरि का चरण का फिर जन्म नहीं आएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा जो भजे हरि को सदा जो भजे हरि को सदा सदा 
सो ही परम पद पाएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा दृढ़ भरोसा दृढ़ भरोसा मन में मन में करके दृढ़ भरोसा मन में करके जो जपे हरि नाम को जो जपे हरि नाम को हरि नाम को हरि नाम को हरि नाम को कहता है ब्रह्मानंद ब्रह्मानंद कहता है ब्रह्मानंद ब्रह्मानंद बीच समाएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा सो ही परम पद पाएगा जो भजे हरि को सदा 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 हरि को सदा हरि को सदा सो ही परम पद पाएगा 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 The next song is by Kabir where he says the swan will fly high up in the sky all alone and when it looks down onto the earth the whole world looks like a celebration like a mela just like how a leaf is blown away from the tree by the wind we never really know which leaf belongs to which tree and when will they ever meet again the angels who work for the lord of death yama are very good at the job that they do they come in the right time but whenever it's the time to go we are always left thinking that there could have been some more time 
when kabir finally says that i sing about the lord who has no boundaries who cannot be reached you may be a guru or a disciple a guru or a shishya but what really matters is what you do उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा हंस अकेला उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा हंस अकेला जग दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा हंस अकेला जग दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला हाँ जग दर्शन का मेला जैसे पात गिरे तरुवर से जैसे पात गिरे तरुवर से मिलना बहुत दुहेला मिलना बहुत दुहेला ना जानू किधर गिरेगा ना जानू किधर गिरेगा लग्या पवन कारेला उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा हंस अकेला जब हो वे उमर पूरी उमर पूरी जब हो वे उमर पूरी जब छूटेगा हुकुम हुजूरी जब छूटेगा हुकुम हुजूरी जम के दूत बड़े मजबूत जम के दूत बड़े मजबूत जम से पड़ा झमेला उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा हंस अकेला जग दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला दास कबीर हर के गुण गावे दास कबीर हर के गुण गावे दास कबीर हर के गुण गावे वाहर को पार न पावे वाहर को पार न पावे गुरु की करनी गुरु जाएगा गुरु की करनी 
गुरु जाएगा चेले की करनी चेला उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा उड़ जाएगा हंस अकेला जग दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला जग दर्शन का मेला उड़ जाएगा अकेला नेक्स्ट सॉन्ग इज बाय भारत यार एंड इन दिस ही सेज दैट अ फर्म माइंड is what we need sweetness in words in our words that we speak that we think is what we need our hands should be able to touch everything that we wish for and our dreams should come true whatever we should get we should get it and we should get it fast wealth and pleasure everyone should have and fame in this world and the work that people do and the happiness that work people do must be achieved from whatever work they do our eyes should be opened our actions should be firm women in this world should should be free and god should always protect us and truth should finally prevail मन दिल मन दिल वाकिले इन वे मन दिल वाकिले कईवसमावद वे कईवसमावद वे धनम 
இயல்பும் வேண்டும் தனமும் இயல்பமும் வேண்டும் தரணியிலே பெருமை வேண்டும் மனதில் உறுதி வேண்டும் 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 கண் திறந்திட வேண்டும் கண் திறந்திட வேண்டும் காரியத்தில் உறுதி வேண்டும் கண் திறந்திட வேண்டும் காரியத்தில் உறுதி வேண்டும் பெண் விடுதலை வேண்டும் பெண் விடுதலை வேண்டும் பெண் விடுதலை வேண்டும் பெரிய கடவுள் காக்க வேண்டும் மனதில் உறுதி வேண்டும் மண் பயனுற வேண்டும் வானகம் இங்கு தென்பட வேண்டும் மண் பயனுற வேண்டும் வானகம் இங்கு தென்பட வேண்டும் உண்மை நின்றிட வேண்டும் நின்றிட வேண்டும் உண்மை நின்றிட வேண்டும் ஓ that was a beautiful uh, uh tribute by uh, vedan just to add here that he's been deeply influenced by uh, mrs ahlya chari who's been a mentor of mrs meena swaminathan and across generations i think the connection continues to stay we move into a series of reminiscences um and we'll be starting first with the brother of mrs meena swaminathan shri ravi bhutalingam who'll be joining us online and uh, we'll be sharing a few thoughts my sister meena was 13 years older than me so in many ways she was part mother and part sister typically she was able to switch effortlessly once when i was 11 or 12 she came across me reading some science fiction ravi what rubbish is this she asked you should be reading some good books like the classics i replied nina why don't you try this book you might find it interesting she thought for a minute and said okay why don't you suggest a couple of good books i gave her the names of isaac asimov and arthur c clarke some weeks later she acknowledged that she had enjoyed reading the work but action oriented as she was she continued 
these books are interesting. Why don't you write an essay of 300 words so that other children can learn about science fiction? I did so with some difficulty. And she published the essay in the magazine of St. Thomas School, Delhi, where she was teaching at the time. A few years later, when she had accumulated a sizable science fiction library, surpassing mine, she told me that it had helped her to see the art, beauty, and passion within science. But again, she put this realization to work. She choreographed the dance of DNA, a beautiful performance for a conference at the IARI at Pusa. Graduate students, after intensive drilling by her at rehearsals, recreated the wonderful movements of the double helix as the DNA molecules split and recombined within a cell. The students were dressed in four colors, each representing one of the four amino acid bases. No one was left out. Those who hesitant to dance were given roles as nuclei or robosomes or anything, just gently rotating. The combination of colors, dance, and music was stunning and joyous. And as the double helix formed and reformed, no one, including me, could fail to be transformed by the power and symmetry of nature and biology. A final few words. Nina loved music. You just heard some of her favorite pieces. She loved Western classical, jazz, Carnatic, and Hindustan. When I was four or five, I used to watch her play the piano and wished I could do so too. So she taught me a few pieces, amongst which were chopsticks and the Bulgarian march, both of which I can still play possibly. But beginnings and endings have a strange circularity. My wife, Sushma, and I were able to be with Nina during her final weeks. In that time, every evening, we all listened to Bhimsen's abhangs, sang carols, or played Scrabble. Once, I sang Chakkani Raja, very tunelessly. But it was only when I sang the tune of the Bulgarian march that Nina looked up and said, very good. That was high praise. And these were the last words I heard from her. The next day, as we left for Delhi, she gave me a kiss. It was the final farewell. Om Chak. Thank you. Thank you very much for that reminiscence. And indeed, I think many of many of us recall. Uh, how she used to talk about science fiction and ask scientists to draw inspiration from science fiction to actually reach out for something new, something novel. So I think many of us can relate to that as well. Our next uh, speaker is Dr. Suman Sahai, who was a student of the IARI in the 1960s and who has also been deeply connected with auntie because of um, various interactions she has had on the student life as well as setting up women's uh, study group within the campus. Uh, so she will be also joining us online. Uh, Namaskar. You can't remember Meena, 
without a smile. She was just such a riot and so unconventional. Um, as a student in the 70s at IRI, uh, we had access to the director's bungalow, thanks to her, and we'd be in and out of the place. Very often we'd be getting all kinds of very nice treats, but she'd involve us um, in all kinds of, of activities on campus. One of which was the annual Mela or whatever, and we'd all be planning games and collecting things um, for games in which Mithya, the youngest, was always wanting to be center stage. She was the littlest one. And Meena would encourage her a lot to do things and, and plan the games, particularly one in which there was a tray of things to be remembered. And that was a, a memory game. I think the first time I ever saw a memory game played out like that. There were other times when we would uh, meet up and she would take us out. She would take us out to a play or to music. And um, as students at that time, she was, you know, so not the director's wife. She was just not uh, anybody with any kind who exercised any kind of uh, authority. She just was so much fun. And she included us in many kinds of activities. We had access to her table. She, she would often make all kinds of things uh, as treats. I remember one time uh, she, we were staying the night, I was staying the night at their house and there was, there was a grapefruit for, for breakfast. And she, actually there were pomelos for breakfast. And she taught us how to eat pomelos. You slice it into two, I mean, you, you, you make two halves and you sprinkle sugar and then you scoop it up with spoons and you, um, and you eat them. So there was, there was so many things associated. We later on, when I was uh, not a student anymore and, and was out, we continued to be in touch. We'd go out for meals and um, do fun stuff together. She was always open for something that was interesting, that was fun. And um, she, I think a lot of people learned a lot of things from her. I certainly did. She was, a, she was an absolutely a super person. She was a lot of fun. She'll be happy wherever she is. She'll make others happy wherever she is. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, indeed, I think uh, Dr. Sahai has also been associated with the foundation as a trustee. So. Uh, we are very grateful that you could uh, share your thoughts with us today. Uh, our next reminiscence is in the form of a message uh, that I will be reading out. Uh, this is from Devika Singh and Kumkum Ghosh. And uh, along with Mrs. Meena Swaminathan, they were considered a threesome. Uh, and what is being shared here today is their experiences with mobile crashes. Remembering Meena. Meena was a dear friend, a colleague, and partner in our shared dream. A dream ignited by the first crash, which Meera Mahadevan opened on the Gandhi Centenary worksite in Delhi. It was a dream to reach out to children who live on our doorstep, on construction sites, and beyond, to the children of a country that had newly acquired its freedom. Ours was a precious friendship that grew with the intense discussions, arguments, and during the long hours of drafting concept notes and vision papers that were required as the program unfolded and our partnerships were built. We were a motley bunch, held together by the clear understanding that whatever the circumstances, children deserve a happy childhood. Meena's contribution was to deepen our understanding of early childhood care and development, particularly how children learn. From our time at busy, noisy creches and schools in the morning, functioning under makeshift shelters at work sites, where we watched Meena sitting on the floor, demonstrating activities with pebbles, sticks, leaves and seeds from the trees around, to night camps and street theater at night, working with Meena was a wonderful learning experience. 
She was also a most valuable team member in the process of building Mobile Crashes as an organization. Its vision, structure, and program, from training field workers, scripting plays for street theater, to developing a sound understanding of early childhood development, Meena's contribution lives till today. Importantly, in those years, Meena forged links for us. The early volunteers and academic institutions like the Center for Women's Development Studies, which enabled mobile crashes to develop a more scientific temper and rigor as a way of working. The doors were also open to educationists and to initiatives in the government. It is through her that we met the towering personalities of Veena Mazumdar and Ila Bain of Seva and gained knowledge of Shram Shakti report on the status of women in India. This led to the conceptualization of the Forum for Crash and Child Care Services. Mobile crashes were drawn, was drawn, taking the responsibility of holding the first National Secretariat of Forces, a giant step for a fledgling organization. It added immeasurably to our growth and vision of interlinked issues. It was the beginning of a movement for women and their young children during the crucial first six years of their life, a mission that is alive today. This was also a time of shared motherhood for us as volunteers. We shared with Meena the joys and challenges of motherhood, the rearing of our young children, all in the midst of our intense work demands. As a personal memory, I recall vividly the glimpse of Meena seated on floor of a humble thatched hut of a construction worker's camp in Delhi, in the pool of light shed by an oil lamp, deeply engaged in conversation with workers about their lives and struggles from which she drew the keywords and themes for the primer she was developing to start literacy programs in the evenings. The doors for young children could not be opened without many steps being taken and adult literacy was an essential component. In the midst of all this activity, we cannot forget our long discussions on governance, organization building and future directions, especially after the founder Meera Mahadevan passed away in 1976. The discussions demanded deep thought and clarity from members of the society. To these, Meena brought the richness of her experience, understanding and intellectual rigor, and it challenged all of us to think clearly. All in all, Mobile Crashes owes much to her. The ECCD movement owes much to her. All of us owe much to her. And we have lost a good friend. Devika Singh and Kumkum Ghosh. The foundation that was laid uh, in gender as well as in early childhood development also led to two um, organizations that Ms. Meena Swaminathan was very deeply involved with. And our next speakers uh, are uh, from CWDS, the Center for Women's Development Studies, where we will first have uh, Komut Sharma, who will be speaking on behalf of CWDS, followed by Vasanti Raman, who's also presently a chair of CWDS, but who will be speaking on behalf of forces. Thank you. Um, I pay my tribute to Meena Swaminathan for a long and distinguished career as an educationist and a child right activist. She was a lifelong crusader of early childhood care and education and on child rights. Meena Swaminathan was a founder member of CWDS and was its vice chair from 1987 to 93. She saw child rights interlinked with women's rights and along with the issue of child rights for which she was a crusader all her life. She also advocated maternity entitlements for women so that the children can be brought up in a healthy environment. I remember a lots of discussion in the early years of CWDS when we were discussing uh, or setting up the agenda for CWDS. She was uh, quite concerned about uh, how we put this agenda on the women's rights agenda. 
Her book, uh, Who Cares, was the first publication which was brought out by the CWDS somewhere in the mid 80s. And at that time in 1985, when the book was published, there was a UN Conf World Conference on Women in Nairobi. And she took the child care agenda to the World Conference and very forcefully argued that women's, that child rights are part of the women's rights agenda. And we should give um, right focus on this issue when we are discussing the issues of women's rights. These early initiatives, which we had at the CWDS, led to the formation of forces or Forum for Christian Child Care Services, which has been mentioned earlier. I think this uh, led to uh, the early foundation of uh, forces, of which she very ably provided the guidance and in the formative years. And for the last several decades, I think forces has been active. It has now regional chapters and networks. She has done pioneering work in the field of ECC, as I've already been mentioned, and has left a rich legacy that will inspire many researchers and activists. I join all of you in celebrating her life and works. Please go ahead, ma'am. Ma'am, we are unable to hear you. I have unmuted my. Yeah, I think this is, yeah, we, you're audible now. We are unable to hear you, ma'am. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yes, thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah. We remember fondly and with pride one of the illustrious founding members of the Forum for Precious and Child Care Services, Forces. There is a deep sense of loss even more in these difficult times when we need a guiding hand. Meena Ji, as she has been called in, uh, in the Forces Network, Meena Ji was instrumental in helping to shape the policy and vision of Forces along with other members right through its inception and its long journey. Her unique contribution lay in foregrounding the twin concerns of mother and child along with highlighting the dual role of the mother as worker and woman as mother and as worker. In the process, she brought to the fore the issue of care and stressed that care of the child and the mother worker was a social responsibility and not to be left to, to the family alone. An early publication of hers, which uh, Dr. Kumut Sharma referred to, Who Cares?, was one of the documents that was like a kind of lodestar for the forces network in those early days. Through the years, she helped educate all of those who were involved in what subsequently came to be known as ECCD, Early Childhood Care and Development. What was remarkable was the manner in which she highlighted the holistic and integrated nature of the issues so that a rational and progressive policy might evolve regarding the young child and the mother worker. She also kept emphasizing that these were inextricably linked with wider issues of social and economic policy. She was instrumental in giving the network a clear roadmap for the movement and played a crucial role in helping to strategize 
the multiple concerns of forces. Her strong voice in policy debate has strengthened the network agenda considerably. In paying homage to Meena Ji, we resolved to carry on her legacy of commitment to the cause of the deprived and underprivileged, keeping in mind the larger goal of democracy and social justice, which were uh, a running thread through her whole life. I join all of you in uh, paying homage to her on behalf of forces and on behalf of all of those who have been involved in these movements. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, for any of you who would like to check out some of the videos that um, Ms. Meena Swaminathan had made on early childhood care and gender, these are still available on YouTube. Uh, on the MSSRF uh, you know, channel, so you could uh, take a look. And these were done several years ago, which was quite pioneering, uh, both in format as well as in message. Our next speaker is uh, uh, Mr. Rajiv Krishnamurti, uh, nephew of Hanti. I have been a spectator to all these things that have been going on for, uh, uh, pertaining to Meena Swamina as a living. Because many of uh, our holidays were either spent in Kumbhagonam or in Delhi. So it's very difficult to collate everything and uh, present. So, Meena Chitti, meaning Meena Auntie. Chitti is aunt in uh, Tamil. As she is known in our family, was more than an aunt and led a life of dedicated to activism, not only for equal rights for women and children, but also for the rights of her favorite family members like nephews, nieces, and the likes to express themselves freely. My brother Sham and I, being the only two nephews on my father's side of the family, had a sp special place in her heart as pullais. She will never say pullai. She will say pullais, meaning sons. And even a passing reference to us as nephews by unsuspecting relatives was met with a stern rebuke. She was very proud, you know, to have us as uh, sons. My memory of Chitti goes back to our Delhi days when she was a young mother of three little and demanding daughters, Soumya, Madhura, and of course, Nitya, sorry. She was the anchor in her family and Chitapa, a doting husband recognized her as such and never stood in a way. As most of you know, Meena always had her way. Chiti's lineage as a prominent bureaucrat's daughter was written all over. She had a unique trait that was often misunderstood by people. She could never differentiate between her immediate family and those who were dear to her. She believed that everyone should be self-confident and speak their minds without hesitation. In a book, there was no room for diffidence. Anyone could openly fight, argue with her, and she was extremely gracious in accepting the outcome. My dad, Krishnamurti Anna to her, had a special place in his heart for Chitti and in his heart for Chitti and was quick to recognize and appreciate her revolutionary ideas. Certainly unorthodox for those days. Although a feminist wouldn't hesitate to speak her mind was somewhat of an oddity in the Kotaram family, which is our larger family. I remember a time when Appa sent Venkat, who was the architect for this building, and me to Delhi by GT Express in blistering heat. This particular trip occurred when both of us were in high school and no one spared a thought about our safety or comfort. Chitti, in particular, believed that children should get hardened, and more so since we were boys. The family was living in Pusa Institute, and Chittapa was the director of IARI. So Chitti was firing on all cylinders, being the director's wife. I distinctly remember one incident in particular when she wanted to take us swimming. I was so scared that I promptly hit myself as my mom had warned me that water was dangerous and would swallow me. Riding in Meena Chitti's car was a lot of fun. 
as she was full of energy. If no one sang, she did. The traffic be damned. She was a Delhi grown, Cambridge educated Tam Bram, giving the Punjabis a run for their money. For all her smartness, Chitti was easily duped, partly because of her soft heartedness, especially towards the poor and needy. She had this charming ability to laugh it off when it happened. In fact, when she advanced some money to the poor, I don't think she expected it back. I remember one incident in particular when we were in Delhi. A guy who came to repair the tatties, the screen, you know, in the verandas, in Pusa house, dismantled them and took them to his place. Nothing happened for a week or so. This guy turns up after 10 days and says that he needs more money and gets it from Chiti. Ultimately, the guy never brings back the thirties. There are numerous such instances and she will laugh it off. The Swaminathan girls travels to, uh, travels to Kumbhagonam were always through Chennai. Three girls and their naughty mother were a treat to us boys. Travel in the 60s and early 70s necessitated carrying an old doll, a water surai, you know, the clay pot, etc. Chitti never failed to bring her famous homemade biscuits in two huge tins, dalda tins. In return, she used to take a jackfruit from Kumbhagonam. Her never say die attitude did not go unnoticed. If we cousins are so close today, it is because of the days we spent together as children in Kumbhagonam and Chennai. And it was Chitti who made it happen. Chitti was always thronged by the student community and women with a variety of problems, mostly marital. Sought her help at all hours of the day. She was daring in taking up cudgels for the victims and into the in-laws or husband's territory. This was happening almost every day. You know, I think Somia, Madhura, all of you know that. Once she made up her mind, there was no stopping her and the victim was fully under her protection and care. Not a day went by without such firefighting. Meena Chitti's passion for arts was broad-based. She was a passionate piano player and a jazz connoisseur. This did not stop her from showing interest in other forms of art such as Hindustani classical, Carnatic music, Kattakut, etc. The family moved to Chennai around 1989-90 at my behest. They almost set up uh, their, their house in Bangalore when you know professor was here and then and he said, I don't have a house. Then I said, I'll get you a house. And it so happened that somebody known to me was selling a house and he saw the house, he liked the house and he was very clear, Meena should approve it. So after a month or so, she came, she saw the house and only after her approval, the whole thing got settled. That's where they lived. It is amazing how Chiti adapted to life in Chennai after the family shift and developed interest in cultural activities that are unique to the city. She was a regular at the Music Academy and was active till around 2013 at the MSSR, where she had a huge following. However, her condition started on a downward slide four plus years ago. And despite trying times, she continued to be as proud as ever. Her skill and repartee never completely deserted her. And of course, we will miss that dearly. The last repartee that she gave me was when I parked the car outside the compound for the simple reason that she was taking a walk on the driveway. And she saw me and said, Raji, where's your car? I said, no, it's parked outside. No, you should park it inside. Then I said, no, Chitti, you're walking. She said, Chonna ni keta de kadea de. Om Shanti. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed, we can visualize know how uh, she would have spoken in many of those circumstances thank you for that uh, our next speaker is mr murli shanmugavelan uh, who's a long time uh, friend and uh, who will be joining us online he's also been uh, a former colleague at mssrf and will be sharing his thoughts welcome hello can everyone hear me hello can you hear me Okay, good. Hi, um, good morning. Um, I don't know how to start, but um, 
it would not be an exaggeration to say that she's the reason what I'm today. Um, she's my mentor. I'm her fan, friend, and I also believe um, I'm here representing many others like me whose lives have changed forever because of and by her. And she's inspired many lives and equally challenged many souls. Um, <clears throat> and most importantly, her intellectual provocation is a result of her compassion and empathy. And that's something that I can never forget. And she's taught me life without compassion and empathy is meaningless. And I still remember um, when I first joined um, at MSO Saref, um, she asked me, uh, what does your mother do? Um, it, this conversation took place in Tamil. And then I said, Amma, Vitla nar kranga. Enna pan ranga. Um, Vitla, 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 Okay. And then she asked me about, do you know anything about the concept called triple burden? I blanked stare. I had a, I, 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 honestly, I, no, I knew nothing about it. And then she said, you better catch up very quickly if you want to, if you want to continue to work and work with me. Um, and I remember, I still remember that she's the reason um, when I, the day I joined Access that I started learning so much. And I can tell you this honestly, hand to my heart. So far, she's the supreme um, uh, um, mentor that I've ever seen. And I don't think I will get a mentor like her ever. And, and, and she's absolutely amazing. At the same time, um, her intolerance towards hypocrisy and insensitivity is world famous. And I just want to end with one anecdote. Um, I remember very clearly uh, there was a, 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 um, a female journalist and a self-confessed feminist. Um, she came to interview Meena Swaminathan. And then she kept on referring Meena as Mrs. Swaminathan, Mrs. Swaminathan. And then the second time or third time, um, Meena said, don't do that again, she said, don't do that. And then this the journalist didn't get it. Um, I think after, I, I was present because I happened to be the communication associate. So I happened to be present whenever there was a media inter interaction. That's the reason why I happened to know this incident. And I could sense that something was actually building up. And after three minutes, to use uh, Mina's word, pitchuputach anamava. She, she literally tore her apart, tore her apart. Um, and I, I personally felt she slightly overdid a bit. And I said, you know, she, she could have easily told this journalist, look, this, I don't like to be referred to this way. And why did she adopt a very serious methods? And I was, it's been, it's been kind of, a, I've, I've been thinking about it and I didn't have the courage to ask her. But later that day, um, at the end of the work, we, we she was she, she we were going back. Um, she was going back home, and she said, "Come, I'll drop you off on, along the way." And I said, "Okay, I got the car." And after some time, I muscled my courage and I asked her, "Don't you think you just actually overdid a bit? Because I don't think um, it required that kind of a reaction." And and then, to which she did not respond for good three minutes, there was a deafening silence in the car. And I literally kicked myself why I asked this question. And I thought she was going to literally tear me apart as well. And after three or four minutes, she was really upset, frustrated. And then she said, um, don't you take away your identity. Don't let anyone take your identity from anybody, okay? That's it. And don't make me say this ever again. Identity and self-respect is very important. And she just stopped it, froze it. And I think she taught me many things. And I think this, this that bit, I still carry that with me. And I carry a piece of Mina Swaminathan, fondly called by uh, called as anti by everybody. Um, I carry a piece of her with me. And I'm sure others too. So in that sense, she lives with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, that's so true. In fact, she would say that I speak strongly and that's the way I am. She never made any apologies. The people can't wish me away or wish me to talk in a different way because this is who I am. And I think that's how that identity is, how she's really lived her life. And that's why we remember her even more fondly. Uh, our next speaker is somebody who's uh, an associate from over two decades ago. 
when auntie was working on voicing silence and uh, we are very glad that uh, selvam could join us today uh, who's i think he's just been traveling from out of town so inviting selvam to speak தெரியாதப்போ எனக்கு ரொம்ப ஊக்கம் கொடுத்து என்ன வளர வச்ச அவங்க பாட்டி தான் பெரும்பாலும் நான் வந்து அவங்கள முத மேடம் கூடுவேன் அப்ப அவங்க சொல்லுவாங்க என்ன பாட்டி பாட்டினு கூப்பிடு அப்படின்னு எனக்கு பாட்டினா எனக்கு ரொம்ப பிடிக்கும் அடிக்கடி போய் இங்க வந்து பார்ப்பேன் வீட்டுல போய் பார்ப்பேன் சொல்லி நாங்க ஒரு எங்களோட விழிப்புணர்ச்சிக்காகவே எங்க பாட்டி ட்ரைனிங் கொடுத்தாங்க சொல்லி மேடையில நாடகம் வடிவமைச்சு கொடுத்தாங்க ஒரு ரெண்டு நாடகம் கண்ணாடி கலைக்குழுன்னு சொல்லி ஒண்ணு மனசு நலைப்புன்னு சொல்லி ஒண்ணு திருநங்கைகள் திருநம்பினாலே சமுத சமுதாயத்துல அப்ப எல்லாம் தெரியாது அப்போ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டிரான்ஸ்மென் அந்த நேரத்துல டிரான்ஸ்மென்னு என்னன்னே தெரியாது அந்த சூழ்நிலை நான் வந்தேன் எனக்கு ஒரு ஒரு டைம் சொல்லுவாங்க நான் நினைப்பேன் இங்க இந்த சமுதாயத்துல என்ன மாதிரி யாருமே இல்லையோ அப்படின்னு பாட்டு சொல்லுவாங்க உன்னை பார்த்து நிறைய பேர் வளருவாங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்லி சொல்லி என்னை வளர்த்த விட்டாங்க பட் நான் பாட்டு கூட இருந்து நான் இவ்வளவு தூரம் வளர்ந்ததுக்கு நான் ரொம்ப பெருமைப்படுறேன் ரொம்ப ரொம்ப தேங்க்ஸ் ரொம்ப நன்றி செல்வம் நீங்க சொன்னதுக்கு அப்புறம் தான் ஞாபகம் வந்தது ஆண்டி ரொம்ப ஆக்சுவலா திட்டுவாங்க வெறும் இங்கிலீஷ் இங்கிலீஷ்ல மட்டும் நீங்க ஒரு ப்ரோக்ராம் நடத்தினீங்கன்னா எல்லாருக்கும் புரியற மாதிரி எல்லா மொழியிலையும் நீங்க நடத்தணும் அப்படிங்கறது சோ நீங்க எங்களை ஞாபகப்படுத்திட்டீங்க அதனால நீங்க பகிர்ந்து கொண்டதுக்கு ரொம்ப நன்றி ஆஹ் அடுத்ததாக ஐ லைக் டு இன்வைட் டாக்டர் ஹனா ப்ரூன் சாரி சாரி ஆனந்தி ஐ லைக் டு இன்வைட் ஆனந்தி டு ஸ்பீக் கிராண்ட் டாட்டர் டு ஸ்பீக் ஆன் தி ஒகேஷன் what can i say about party she meant so much to so many people as we have heard i have fond memories of party taking me to the beach swimming to see all night cooters and so much more but for me she was not just party She also shaped me as a scholar and activist and an educator. She instilled in me a love of languages, literature, theater, film. And her switching between English, Hindi, Tamil, etc really inspired me to think about language and translation and multilingualism. So I want to share two short poems with you that reflect how I'm feeling right now. The first poem is one that I found in a book in Party's collection by the poet Salil Chaturvedi. It is titled Grandmothers. The second is by a Kashmiri American poet Fatima Asghar. The title of the poem is Kal, a word that means both yesterday and tomorrow in Urdu and Hindi. So I'll read the poems now. Grandmothers by Salil Chaturvedi. Sometimes it happens grandmothers pass away leaving tiny holes in the bed their bodies light like birds i wonder if she will find her way to the next place after all with every death the world goes into hiding till the birds discover it again with song perhaps she will make it just like the old glossy ibis that makes its appearance on the lake near our house when it is overgrown with lilies kal by fatima askar allah you gave us a language where yesterday and tomorrow are the same word kal a spell cast with the entire mouth backed of the throat to teeth tomorrow means i might have her forever yesterday means i say goodbye again kal means they are the same I know you can bend time. I'm merely asking for what is mine. Give me my mother for no other reason than I deserve her. 
if yesterday and tomorrow are same, pluck the flower of my mother's body from the soil. Kal means I am in the crib, eyelashes wet as she looks over me. Kal means I'm on the bed, crawling away from her, my father back from work. Kal means she's dancing at my wedding, not yet come. Kal means she's oiling my hair before the first day of school. Kal means I wake to her strange voice in the kitchen. Kal means she's holding my unborn baby in her arms, helping me pick a name. Thank you. That was very moving, Anandi. Um, we move on to the uh, last part of uh, this program where I'd, be, uh, I'd like to invite Dr. Hannah Bruin to come over. Uh, she's been associated for a long time uh, with auntie. And today she will also be introducing the Katai Kuta performance that is going to be uh, put up today. Ever since she came to India, she's had a long association with the uh, auntie who kind of uh, mentored her and helped her through the years. And today we are very uh, grateful that you could put up this performance. Over to you, Dr. Hannah, please to introduce uh, the piece that will be performed as well. Might be strange to see a white face <laughs> in this uh, gathering, um, but Amma has been my Indian Amma for many years. And since the moment we met, then in Delhi we had a connection, uh, and it has stayed very strong. And as I was doing my research uh, on Katikuta, which is a Tamil theater tradition. Um, she joined me and we've had her, heard a lot about her, but what I would like to kind of remember here, she had also this very nice mischievous streak. So watching a kuta, an all night kuta sitting in the audience is not something a good girl does, as all of us know, but we really enjoyed it and kind of talking during this all night performances. So we shared uh, this kind of mischievous enjoyment, as well as the fact that um, coming to India, building my own life here, she acted as my Indian mom and appa, as my Indian dad, coming from a similar family with three girls, more or less the same age. Um, I recognize many things, also <laughs> the kind of interactions between the three of you. Um, and when Raspal and I talk about her and about Appa, we have this kind of famous saying that when I do something Raspal doesn't like, or we have a kind of uh, small debate, he says, Nina, as Appa used to call her, when something happened, she had just closed the doors and he wanted them open. So these kind of things we have as a reference to refer to them. And I, this will stay with us forever. And uh, the Kuti you're going to see, uh, Rajpa in the role of Karna and Tamala Rasi, who is the first generation women performers, which Kuti used to be an all male tradition. And Amma, as you know, has been a great advocate of having all genders on the stage with equal access, having their voices heard. So no voice in silence, but now speaking up and speaking out because when a woman performs the role which always has been done by a man even when it is a female role the performance changes so you'll see Tamala Rossi who has now kind of just transcended what we hope is the last barrier that is marriage and having a child and continue to perform Karna Moksham in the village is an all-night performance a piece from the Mahabharata and this is commissioned when a person has died in the hope that the soul of the deceased will reach Moksha as Karna does in the play. So we have here a moment where theater and reality coincide. Uh, this will be a 20 minute piece, actually not the Moksha part, but the moment where Karna takes leave of his wife, Ponori. In the Tamil tradition, Karna has a wife. In the Sanskrit tradition, it is said that Karna's sons die on the battlefield. 
but there is no speech or no word about the wife. She is the main character, and the debate between Karna and Kornuri is the main part of Karna Moksha. Thereafter, he goes and does battle, and then meets Krishna, and he gives him Moksha. This we will do on the 5th of April, when, uh, in honor of Meena Swaminathan, we have an all-night performance uh, on behalf of the Katipuja Sangam, of whom she has been one of the chief patrons. I hope you will enjoy Karna Moksham. It is a bit louder than the first music we heard, so please <laughs> be aware.
சூதமாக விதிரரை விடுத்து அழைத்து வந்து சகுனியை விடுத்து சூதம் ஆடி அவருக்கு உண்டான நாடு நகரம் அனைத்தையும் அமர்த்து கொண்டான் அப்பேற்பட்டவன் நல்லவனா சூதாட்டம் என்றால் ஒருவருக்கு வெற்றி ஒருவருக்கு தோல்வி
வணக்கம் என்ன பேசுறது அதை எப்படி பேசுறது அப்படின்றது ரொம்ப எனக்கு மட்டும் இல்லை இங்கே எல்லோருக்கும் அப்படித்தான்றது உணர முடியும் அதனால இருந்தாலும் அம்மா கேட்டுக்கிட்டாங்க முதல் கர்ண மோட்சம் பார்த்த உடனே அதை மட்டும் சொல்ல நினைக்கிறேன் என்ன நினைச்சாங்க தெரியல காலையில கூத்து முடிஞ்சு வரும்போது ராஜகோபால் பாண்டிய ராத்திரி கர்ணமோட்சம் இந்த கூத்து நான் சேர்த்துட்டா நீ ஆடணும் எங்க இருந்தாலும் ஆடணும் நாங்க என்னம்மா இது இப்படி திடீர்னு சொல்லிட்டீங்க உங்க வயசு என்ன எங்க வயசு என்ன நான் இப்படி திடீர்னு சொல்லலாமா அப்படின்னு கேட்டதுக்கு இல்ல இல்ல பார்த்தேன் மனசுல பட்டது சொல்லிட்டேன் நீ எங்க இருப்பியோ ஆலன்ல இருப்பியா இந்தியாவில் இருப்பியான்னு தெரியாது அங்க இருந்தா கூட ஆடணும் உயிரோடு இருந்தா எங்க இருந்தாலும் இந்த கர்ண மோட்சம் உங்களுக்காக நிச்சயம் ஆடுறேன் அப்படின்னு சொன்ன வாக்குதான் அதுதான் நன்றி அந்த சீன் எடுத்து பண்ணணும்னு சொல்லிட்டு பண்ணிட்டேன் இதே அந்த மோட்ச சீன் எல்லாமே முழு இரவு கர்ண மோட்ச கூத்து ஏப்ரல் அஞ்சாம் தேதி அண்ணா சொல்லிருப்பாங்கன்னு நினைக்கிறேன் அங்க வந்து ஆசீர்வதிக்கணும் அம்மா நீங்க எங்க இருந்தாலும் சொர்க்கத்தை தான் இருந்து சுய புத்தி எனக்கருள என்னை சூழ்ந்த எதிரிகளை துரத்தி அடித்து செல்வீர் இந்த சங்கத்துக்காக இந்த சங்க வளரணும் மட்டும் இல்ல நீங்களே சுயமாக இங்க பவுண்டேஷன் மூலமா தான் முதல்ல நாங்க நடத்தினு வந்தோம் இங்க வந்து போவோம் அதுக்கப்புறம் எல்லாமே நீ சொந்த காலில் நிக்கணும் அதை நான் பாக்கணும் அப்பாவும் அம்மாவும் எங்களை அப்படி 
ஒரு பிள்ளைகளாக பாவித்து அது மட்டும் இல்லை அவங்க இன்னொரு ஆசை என்ன கேட்டாங்கன்னா எனக்கு ஒரு வேஷம் கொடுத்து ஆட வைக்க மாட்டியான்னாங்க அதனாலதான் நான் அந்த கலை விழாவில உங்க தர்மர் வேஷம் கொடுத்து முடிச்சு ஊட்டி பார்க்க ஆசைப்படுறவங்க பர்த்டேல அப்படின்னு முடிச்சு ஊட்டி தர்மராவ் உட்கார வச்சு பார்த்து எங்க சங்கம் மகிழ்ந்தது நன்றி வணக்கம் So on the 5th of April, this will be in Punjara Santango, where we are based, near to Kainchipuram. And all of you are very welcome. Starts at 10 o'clock at night till 6 the next morning. So on behalf of the family, I want to thank all of you for having come together today to celebrate the life of uh, my mother, Nina. And as we have heard and seen, we've, her life was multifaceted and full of, um, and it's difficult to even imagine that in one lifetime, one could have touched so many different uh, aspects and I'm very, very grateful to all those who spoke today, both in person and on Zoom. Um, and we tried to cover different aspects of her life from early days in Pusa Institute, of course, family reflections, but also the work done with early childhood education, with mobile crash, with project access on gender, the Center for Women's uh, Studies, and of course, all the work at the foundation over the last 30 years including theater and, um, uh, and uh, work, bringing together all of those different aspects. Um, thank you so much. Romba romba nandri, Rajagopal. Hannah, you have come to your mother's house. You have come to your mother's house. You have come to your mother's house. I have come to your mother's house. I have come to your mother's house. I have come to your mother's house. அஞ்சாம் தேதி அன்னைக்கு எத்தனை பேர் வர முடியுமோ அங்க காஞ்சிபுரத்துல வந்து கண்டிப்பா அந்த ஃபுல்லா ஆல் நைட் நீங்க ஆடுற கர்ண மோட்சத்தை அம்மாவோட பேரன் பேத்திகள் எல்லாம் பாத்துட்டு இருக்காங்க சார் எல்லாரும் இங்க வர முடியல ஜூம்ல நிறைய பேர் பாத்துட்டு இருக்காங்க ரொம்ப வருஷம் ஆச்சு எங்க எங்க பொண்ணு கூட ஹவாயில இருக்கா நினைச்சேன் முடியாதுன்னு தெரியும் இருந்தாலும் இவ்வளவு வயசாகும் எனக்கு கால் ஐயா டாக்டர் ஐயா தான் நமக்கு இது அவரு ஞாபகமா வச்சு கேப்பார் கால் எப்படி ராஜகோபால் சரியா இருக்கா முட்டிலாம் நீங்க வந்து குதிக்கிறது நாங்க நினைச்சோம் இந்த இதெல்லாம் தாங்குமா இங்க அப்படின்னு Uh, I want to thank also Vedant Bharadwaj for the beautiful, beautiful rendition of some of Amma's favorite songs. I know that she must be very, very happy and smiling wherever she is. I think this is what she would have really liked and enjoyed and appreciated. Uh, and I also want to thank the team. I think Mangai, uh, where are you, Mangai? Uh, Mangai, Padman, Anandi, and uh, Rajamanikam, and uh, Kanappan. Sangeeta, Raman, uh, they have all worked day and night because it was not easy to collate all of the, uh, you know, the photographs which uh, you saw today. And the model or a film, Anandi, Mangai, of course, with the help of uh, all family members, Raman, Ivangala, Renumunala, the continuous up and thanks to TM Krishna for uh, the audio. I think it made it very, very beautiful. We are, we have recorded this and uh, we will make it available because some people have not been able to see the whole thing and many people could not make it in person or even on Zoom today. So we'll share the recording, uh, but because I think it has brought together. Also, I want to say a lot of people among you might want to speak. Nariya Perika Pesano Nasi Arko, Avangloda Memories Share Panikanob in Nasi Arko, Adakanangavande. என்ன சஜஸ்ட் பண்றோம்னா இப்ப டைம் எல்லாருக்கும் பேசுறதுக்கு அன்பார்ச்சுனேட்லி இல்ல சோ ஒரு ஸ்டுடியோ இங்க இருக்கு நீங்க வந்து ஒரு ஒரு ரெக்கார்டிங் அம்மாவோட மெமரிஸ் ஏதாவது ரெக்கார்ட் பண்றீங்கன்னா அது பண்ணுங்க இல்லாட்டா நீங்க வீட்டுல கூட பண்ணி எங்களுக்கு வந்து அனுப்பலாம் இமெயில்ல அது எல்லாத்தையும் கம்பைல் பண்ணி நாங்க ஒரு ஃபில்மா பண்ண போறோம் 
ஏன்னா ஃபேமிலி மெம்பர்ஸும் சரி அவங்கள வழியில இருக்கிறவங்க தெரிஞ்சவங்க நிறைய இப்போ எங்களுக்கு எழுதுறாங்க எங்களுக்கே தெரியாம நிறைய அனெக்டோட்ஸ் அம்மாவோட லைஃப்ல இருந்து இப்ப தெரிய வருது ஸோ அது எல்லாத்தையும் கம்பைல் பண்ணா ரொம்ப நல்லா இருக்கும் அப்படின்னு நாங்க நினைக்கிறோம் இப்ப பேச விட்டா நம்ம பேசிட்டே இருக்கலாம் இன்னும் ஒரு அஞ்சு மணி நேரம் எல்லாரும் சொல்ல விரும்புவாங்க அதனால நீங்க அத ரெக்கார்ட் பண்ணி ஒரு ரெண்டு நிமிஷமோ மூணு நிமிஷமோ ஆஹ் அம்மாவோட ஏதாவது ஒரு நினைவு உங்களுக்கு எது உங்களுக்கு மனசுல இருக்கோ அதை நீங்க அனுப்பிச்சு விட்டீங்கன்னா நாங்க அதை கம்பைல் பண்ணி ஒரு ஃபில்ம் பண்ணி எல்லாரும் எப்போதுக்கும் அதை வச்சுக்கலாம் ஒரு ஒரு மெமரியா இப்போ எல்லாருக்கும் லஞ்ச் சர்வ் பண்ணிருக்கு மூணு இடத்துல லஞ்ச் இருக்கு இங்க பக்கத்துல எஸ்பெஷலி வயசானவங்க இங்க பக்கத்துல சாம்பசிவம் ஆடிட்டோரியம்ல பிளீஸ் டேக் யுவர் லஞ்ச் வி ஆல்சோ ஹேவ் லஞ்ச் இன் த டைனிங் ஹால் அட் த பேக் ஹியர் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ இன் த ஸ்டாஃப் கேன்டீன் ஸோ ஆல் ஸ்டாஃப் அண்ட் ஆல் கெஸ்ட் எவ்ரிபடி பிளீஸ் ஹாவ் யுவர் லஞ்ச் and then go amma would have definitely wanted everybody to have have a good meal and uh, once again uh, i thank you all very much for making this memorial uh, i hope that it will be 